At 10 minutes before 9 in the morning, Emin was already standing in front of the mosque. It was quiet all around it, and the weather was a little cloudy. That morning, Emin had an unusual joy in his heart. He had generally liked Tbilisi, and after the meeting with Zaharia, he held some special feeling toward the city in his heart. <laughs> At exactly nine o'clock, old Zaharia came. They greeted each other, and then Zaharia took a piece of paper out of his pocket. I'd like to read the first stanza of this poem to you in Georgian translation. Just listen to how it sounds. Esquerana, Sirkoam Rudia Copila, Helmar Talikazi me Arminahas, Sirkoarulitum Troba Sad Chakrobila, Or Pirobas Mosamart Ledvina Haus, Esquerana, Sirkoam Rudia Copila. It sounds beautiful, sir. Your language is beautiful. Sure. Do you know what Wagif said about Georgian language? No, sir. In another Muhammad, where he praised beautiful girls of Tbilisi, he said, Their pleasant accent is like the speech of Christ. See how much the poet enjoyed the speech of Georgian girls. I think he was right. I enjoy it as well. <laughs> I think the speech of Azerbaijani girls is no less beautiful. It sounds like the singing of nightingales. <laughs> Mr. Zaharia, you don't seem to be a hermit, but your favorite poem in our literature is a poem about the desperate condition of the world, the slavery to ego and the desire to flee from the world. Why do you love this poem more than the others? Mola Penah was a life lover. He praised beauties all his life, and he wrote optimistic poems about love and just shortly before he died, he wrote this Muhammad. It certainly has some pessimistic ideas. You can feel the poet had lost his hope for this world. But he had no hopelessness in his soul. And do you know its secret? A famous philosopher of the past century, Albert Schweitzer, said, My knowledge is pessimistic, but my hopes are optimistic. That's a very good saying. Yes, it is true. And Zaharia read the first stanza of the poem. Men zahan mülkün de mütlek doğru halet görmedim. Her ne gördüm, eğri gördüm, özge babet görmedim. Aşinalar ihtilatında sedaget görmedim. Bi etu igraru imanu deyanet görmedim. Bi vefadan lacerem tehsili hacet görmedim. Sir, I want to ask you something. You recently read me the Georgian translation of this stanza. Could you please tell me its meaning in short? Of course. The translation says, 
how crooked this world is. I have not seen any righteous man. Who has ever seen love overcome enmity? Who can judge hypocrisy? How crooked this world is. I first got to know Vagif through these words. I think the meanings in the translation are not as strong as they are in the original. But the way the translation sounds is really beautiful, no doubt. Indeed, it's like the speech of Christ. Yes, I mean, this translation is not flawless. But I am so grateful to our poet Carlo Caladze for translating this beautiful poem into the Georgian language. If he hadn't translated it so beautifully, this conversation we are having here right now would have never happened. The old Georgian man and the young Azerbaijani guy kept walking up the stairs towards Narikala fortress. They came to a wide area paved with sets. All the city could be seen from here. Kura river was quietly flowing, and a huge church with a golden dome on the other side, which was different from all the buildings, attracted Emin's attention. Tbilisi is beautiful. It is in its own way, but for me it is too busy and noisy. Just like all the big cities are. Narikala is a quiet place, but the noise comes up here from below. Everyone is hurrying and fussing down there. It's as if here is heaven and down there is earth. And we have ascended here and we are looking down from above we are in the perfect place to read the second stanza of the Muhammad. Khah Sultan, Khah Dervishu Jadabil Ittifak, Özlerin Gulmush. Giriftari gamu derdu ferak Ci fey dünyayadir Her ihtiyacu iştiyak Munca kim ettim tamasha Sözlere astım kulak Kiz bi behtandan sevayi Bir hekayet görmedim Think about this city, I mean. There are so many people there, both rich and poor. They all have troubles. And they believe that if they only possess the wealth of the world and get good positions, they will have no more trouble. But in truth, they create trouble for themselves with such thoughts. Well, perhaps there would be nothing bad in desiring the wealth of the world, for doing good works. But who is thinking about good works nowadays? Everyone wants entertainment. Everyone is selfish. Especially the rich. I believe they should care for the poor more and they should pay attention to others' needs instead of spending their money for unnecessary things. There is some truth in your words, Emin, but I want to tell you something. We always tend to find fault with others. The poor find fault with the rich, while the rich often justly complain of the bad character of the poor. In fact, everyone has his or her part in the common fault of the human race. And I believe that is what Vagif is talking about here in the last lines of this stanza. Pay attention to it. However much I looked and listened to the words, he says, I have not seen anything except for lies and slanders. Everyone desires the riches of the world, 
But if you listen to people, what do you hear them say? Hmm. Many people say, I want it for my children, not for myself, or I want it for good, not for evil. So people justify even their desire to get rich. We see ourselves as right and good, and others as wrong and bad. This is what lies and slander means, I mean. I am not better than them. I am a sinner human being just like they are. I have no right to judge them. Human judgment is but lies and slander. The Bible says, Who are you to judge the servant of another? There is only one lawgiver or judge, and it is God. Man is not your servant, but God's servant. God will judge even the secret intents of the hearts. How can I know whether or not the person has an evil intention in his or her heart? God knows. When I talk evil of someone, I slander that person without even realizing it. Sure, everyone will give account to God for themselves. This is what we Muslims believe as well. It is written in the Quran, O Allah, creator of the heavens and the earth, knower of the unseen and the witnessed, you will judge between your servants. We people know only the witnessed, but God knows the unseen. Our poet was right. People's words are nothing but slander. By God, Mr. Zakharia, it's so interesting to analyze this poem together with you. And I find it interesting to talk with you. Besides, this poem has profound meanings. Molla Penah, as a master of pen, wrapped these meanings in the poetic music which is pleasant to our ears. One does enjoy reading this poem and meditating on it. You know, I mean, I lived a long life in this world. I have seen a lot. And I assure you that people are gradually losing the ability to meditate. The generation before us would meditate more. And nowadays people are unable to meditate. Everything has become superficial. The speed of life has accelerated and it is impossible to meditate at high speed. In order to meditate, you need to pause and focus your attention. <laughs>